Here. Motion to approve the agenda is proposed. Second. We have a motion and proper second for the agenda. Those in favor vote aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We have an agenda. Mr. Chairman, we have uh, a couple items of new business. I'll take that first one, and that is a uh, motion to approve uh, East 5th Street parking ramp garage repair. Second. We have a motion and proper second for the East 5th Street parking ramp garage repair. Is there discussion on that? No. I have a little bit. Can we hear a little bit about what those repairs entail, just for the public? somewhat pricey Craig Clark building official um, actually I did bring some handouts I didn't make one for everybody if you want one I can get you one um, it's what we will be doing it's actually all structural repair on the I call it the far end of the ramp um, one of the abutments over the winter has kind of deteriorated and with the harsh winter um, they're gonna make some structural repair there the ramp one end of the ramp will be closed probably for about 35 days to do this repair and at that point then um, it's it's nothing cosmetic it's all just structural repair to the one into that ramp and it does not sound optional um, no I don't think it is and this would have no impact on our discussion with Republic or anybody else that's I no. that it needs to be done yeah this is needs to be done thanks I, I'm gonna mention one other thing as part of this contract the contractor is required to x-ray that whole wall so um, we should have a better idea on if there is any other repair that needs to be done um, in that wall so okay thank you any additional discussion on that matter seeing aye. seeing none those in favor vote aye aye, aye. aye. opposed same sign we that item passes and the second is a uh, a uh, motion to approve a uh, UniQ rooftop unit replacement. I'll second that motion. All right. Got a motion and proper second for the UniQ unit replacement. That was a lightning strike, was it not? Correct. So any Correct. discussion on that? I just wanted to know what it is. What, what is the unit? Right. Oh, what is the building? The old depot. depot. The old depot building, you yeah. can see it. I know where the building Over is, there. just what the unit is. The unit is runs the air handling equipment. Um, it was hit by lighting, so it's their air conditioning, it's their heat, it's <laughs> everything that moves air in that building. So um, we're That's replacing that hit. Uh, the building got hit. It just fried the oh, okay. um, electronics of that unit. Okay. Does insurance cover that at all? Is it no I mean I guess <laughs> uh, if it's more than thirty thousand dollars then it probably would but since it's under it or 50 then so okay thank you any further discussion on that item seeing none those in favor of the UniQ rooftop units replacement vote aye aye, aye. aye. Opposed, same sign that item passes motion motion to adjourn second a motion to adjourn those in favor vote aye aye, aye. we are adjourned Boards and Commissions Committee for July 7th to order. Madam Secretary, if you'd read the roll, please. Mr. Schmidt? Here. Mr. Hart? Here. Mr. Jones? Here. Motion to approve the agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second for the agenda. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 So we have an agenda. Mr. Chair. Somebody'd like to take that item of business. Mr. Chair, I move to receive and file Mayor Clark's recommendation of the following appointment. Robert Reisinger for the Board of Adjustment. Uh, expiration date 12-8-17. For a new appointment. Second. We have a motion and a second on that uh, recommendation. Any discussions, questions, comments? No, sir. Seeing none, I assume we're all ready to vote. All in favor of that, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion will be approved. Motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 We're adjourned. Thank you, gentlemen.
Let's call the Human Resources Committee to order. Madam Clerk, would you read the roll, please? Yes, Mr. Wilper. Here. Mr. Hart. Here. Ms. Cole. Here. Mr. Jones. Here. Mr. Schmidt. Here. Mr. Lynn. Here. Mr. Morrissey. Here. Motion to approve the agenda is proposed. Second. We have a motion and a second on the approval of the agenda. Any questions, discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Oh, same sign. We have one request today. Uh, someone would like to take that? Mr. Chair. Mr. Move that we approve the request from the Director of Safety Services to begin the recruitment process for a reserve police officer and make up to 10 appointments. Second. We have a motion a second on this request. I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but Mr. Chalk is here if you'd like to ask him any questions. I guess just the one question I'd like to ask, Dan, is um, I see we're, we're talking about 10 and we're up we're to or up to 10 yeah um, and I think I mentioned a meeting or two ago I'd heard that back in the 70s or 80s when Leo Ruff was mayor we had we had like 40 some reserves officers I mean do you have any kind of plans or ideas to get to that number because it certainly seems like they would be beneficial to our city Dan Trelka director of safety services that'd be great if we could it's hard to find people that want to do it that's mm -hmm. all yep. we had a recruiting effort about two years ago and we picked up I think four uh, but in the meantime we've had some people that walked away from it so we're at 14 mm -hmm. and we'd like to maintain a staff of 24 25 okay. they're just hard to come by anything we can do to help that cause ask the word I mean is it a is it a just find the right person or is it the money issue or the time issue or a combination of all of the above or I think it's the uh, uh, financial issue on their part and the commitment that okay. we'd like to see from them because it's it, it there's a lot more training now than there was 20 or 30 years ago because they're they're certified officers in the state of Iowa and the requirements have increased quite a bit in that time so it's quite the time commitment and training commitment did we have a service club or some group that donated some money for uh, some of the equipment uh, the Is Realtors it? Association donated money uh, was that for helmets, I believe. Is that what this is for? For the for the reserves? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. What are yeah. what are the basic requirements? Age, ability. Uh boy, same as a police officer. I have to have a high school education, eighteen years of age, uh can't be older than sixty five. So pretty broad range. Three months. You're in. And if it's there's they have to meet the physical fitness standards, which uh, <laughs> some people have difficulty with. Yeah, it might be a challenge. It might be a challenge. I'm going. See, I, know, <laughs> I notice um, under the subject and then recommended council, no, and under the summary statement says 12 replacements and then it's 10, repla 10 reserve officers. Is that supposed to be the same or? I think it should. Two? Yeah, I think it should be the same. Okay. So it's. Should be ten. Okay. Should it be then ten or twelve, Dan? Ten. ten. Up to ten. Oh. Any further questions? And the financial requirements are borne by the person volunteering? Yes. And that's like twenty five hundred dollars, thirty five hundred dollars is pretty it's steep. pretty pricey, yeah. yeah. Two to four grand. Have we ever looked at grants for that? Uh -huh. uh, Grants are hard to come by in this. I mean, grants are getting tight. But there's got to be possibilities out there. If we could supplement that. That'd be kind of. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, would it be a roll call, roll call, please? Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Wolper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to adjourn. Second. A motion to second for adjournment. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. Oh, same sign. We are adjourned. Thank you.
Finance Committee meeting to order, please. Madam Clerk, would you read the roll? Yes, Ms. Cole. Here. Mr. Schmidt. Here. Mr. Jones. Here. Motion to approve the agenda is proposed and also the minutes of June 23rd. Second. We have a motion and a second. Do we have discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 Oh, same sign. Madam Chairperson, I'd be delighted to take the travel requests. Thank you. First, we have Sergeant Devine for the Bloodstain Pattern Analysis School in Ankeny, Iowa, July 29th through the 31st. Cost not to exceed $730. Investigator, Investigator Hageman, Layton Print Evidence uh, School in Council Bluffs, July 28th through August 1st. Cost not to exceed $1,603. Officers Erie, Schaff, and Wilson, Firearms Instructor Certification, Johnston, Iowa, August 11th through the 22nd, cost not to exceed $3,385. Steve Jordan, Fire Marshal, uh, CSA Fire Alarms Training, Des Moines, Iowa, July 23rd, cost not to exceed $130. Officer Rolapa, Hazardous Device School, Huntsville, Alabama, August 17th through the 23rd, cost not to exceed $900. And Steve Sturtz, permit writer uh, for the residential building inspector exam, excuse me, in Des Moines, July 29th, cost not to exceed $168. And then we also have Larry McGreevy uh, requesting a garbage can refund overcharge, the amount of $63 because the service was provided by a private hauler. And also Robert Klein with the same request. Uh, for an address at 2178 Falls Avenue. We'll make a motion. We approve all eight of those items. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there discussion? Nope. Seeing hearing none, all in favor vote by the sign of aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Those items pass. We got a lot of pre ops. Yes. Are you up to it? I'm ready. You got some okay. water? Yeah, I do. All right, we've got <coughs> building maintenance in the amount of $1,485 for nine council chairs and $165 each for council chambers. Building and maintenance in the amount of $2,525 to replace damage, solid surface, toilet, partition door, and pilaster in second floor restroom at the Five Sullivan Brothers <coughs> Convention Center. Building and maintenance in the amount of $21,808.59 for tuck pointing at the public market. Building maintenance in the amount of $10,985.80 to replace rooftop, rooftop unit at UniQ. Building maintenance in the amount of $2,428.76 for purchase of two draft beer coolers at $1,214.38. <coughs> each for Sullivan Brothers Con uh, Convention Center, engineering in the amount of $16,820 plus $49.30 shipping and handling for own payment quality indicator model uh, 380 and one SDG 200 soil density gauge, fire rescue in the amount of $6,000 for consumables for classes held on site at the training center Leisure services not to exceed $3,300 for padded chairs and cart for, for basketball court benches. Leisure services in the amount of $21,980. Installation of metal roof at Riverfront Sports Park concession stand. Leisure services not to exceed $4,200. Rebuilt motor installed in leisure services truck number 452. Information services in the amount of $4,247.10 for two Dell N3024 switches. Information systems in the amount of $5,543.64 for four Intel Xeon E52660 V2 server processors. Information systems in the amount of $24,884. 72 cents plus $35 shipping and handling for Equalogic PS6100 VX SAN information systems in the amount of $3,892.15 and $35 shipping and handling for 16 by 16 gigabyte server memory module information systems in the amount of $8,903.60 plus $35 shipping and handling for a power edge R620 server, 
information systems in the amount of $12,450 for VMware, Venter license, and six VMware Vesper licenses. Information systems in the amount of $6,405.82 for core, core network equipment. 3750X-24T-E switch with SmartNet. Police in the amount of $1,800, not to exceed $1,800, plus $200 shipping and handling. For a ultra kimono bite suit with police package. That should be interesting to hear about. And police in the amount of $9,765 plus $50 shipping and handling for two 16-channel passive transceivers with three terabyte hard drive upgrade for department video system. Police in the amount of $8,598 plus $225 shipping and handling for eight Pelco IP cameras with microphones and accessories. Police in the amount of $1,538 plus 60 cent. Sorry, again. Police in the amount of $1,538.60 plus $50 shipping and handling for 28 individual first aid kits, one or IFAK for each member of the tactical team. Police in the amount of $6,815 plus $50 shipping and handling for long pole camera search system kit with eight IR LED color camera head. Police in the amount of $2,456 plus $500 shipping and handling for 10 steel tactical targets used for firearms training of police department officers, traffic operations in the amount of $3,550 plus $40 shipping and handling for radar recorder with Bluetooth, traffic operations in the amount of $12,075 plus $200 shipping and handling for three M52 controllers, two dash MMUs, and six BIUs. Traffic operations in the amount of $1,880.71 plus $100 shipping and handling for Sono Tube. Traffic operations in the amount of $1,496.56. Boring for boring under concrete for street light repair at the 800 block of Commercial Street. Waste management in the amount of $2,239 plus $300 shipping and handling for Hydro Ranger and Transducer for Burn Bray Sanitary Lift Station. Waste management in the amount of $8,432 plus $300 shipping and handling for AB22C-D1170A103PF400 AC Drive VFD for effluent pump station. Waste management, the amount of $10,118.40 plus $300 shipping and handling for CHD HDL 3600 complete breaker for number three Easton RWW pump. Waste management services, the amount of $8,070.61 plus $300 shipping and handling for heat lamp and accessories for four Eastern final clarify scum troughs. <laughs> second. We have a motion and a Absolutely second. Done. Do we have discussion? I've got a couple okay. questions, yes. First, uh, the building maintenance, tuck pointing in the public market. Do we, are we making money on that building? Are we losing money? Are we breaking even? Do we know? I mean, do we, we, we pay the expense of that, but is there any payback or how do, can you remind me again, how does that work? Yeah. I'm going to defer that to somebody else, I guess. <laughs> I, I can talk about the tuck pointing, but. Um, okay. I'm just wondering about the money part of it. Yeah. yeah. We do have a lease with the Riverloop Cooperative. Um, the rent, I believe, is 10% of any net return from the building. I've been requesting financial statements. We don't quite have them yet, but not expecting that we're going to make a lot of money from that. Okay. So we, but the, the building expenses are ours. The operating expenses like utilities are not paid by the city. They're paid by the tenants. So okay. right. thank you. And then also if I could ask Dan to tell us a little bit about the ultra kimono bite suit. 
Because I know David wants to hear about it. I do. <clears throat> Dan Trelka, Director of Safety Services. That's for training the police dogs. Uh, we have bite sleeves, but I believe we don't have a bite suit. Uh, and it covers the officer's entire body so that they can appropriately train the dogs and uh, biting and biting pressure and the appropriate time to bite. So this is for training our dogs? Our dogs, Correct. yes. All right. Okay, all right. Thank you. No questions? Uh, no, I'm, I'm good. Okay. Um, all in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 I would like to vote aye on everything except the first item, the uh, nine council chairs. I'd like to vote no on those, if I could. Good. Even though we already Opposed? Have them. <laughs> okay, the, those items pass. I move that we approve the project, project budget rebate for Mid American Energy to close out the construction balance entrance sign mezzanine, caging, et cetera, at the Public Works Building in the amount of $117,655. Second. Motion, second. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor vote by the sign of aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. I also move that we pay the bills this week, which are $2,580,181.49. And forty nine cents two comma five eight zero comma one eight one point four nine. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion. Seeing none, all in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 We'll pay the bills this week. Motion adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. We are adjourned. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this regularly scheduled meeting of the Waterloo City Council this Monday, July 7th. It's hard for me to believe that I'm saying July, but here we are. So, uh, Madam Clerk, would you uh, start us with the roll, please? Yes, Ms. Cole. Here. Mr. Jones. Here. Mr. Schmidt. Here. Mr. Lynn. Here. Mr. Morsey. Here. Mr. Welper. Here. Mr. Hart. Here. Very good. Thank you, Madam Clerk. If you would all please join me in standing for just a moment of silent reflection or prayer. It would be much appreciated. Thank you very much. Uh, our Pledge of Allegiance tonight is going to be led by Mr. Kent Shankel, our Director of Cultural and Arts. Kent, would you lead us, please? Please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of, of the United States, States of America, America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, stands one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. You may be seated. <coughs> 
Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart. I'd like to make a motion to approve an amended agenda. And that first amendment is in 1A2 within the consent agenda. And that is to cross out the name, take out the name of Tamara Stocks and put in Jessa Patterson. And all the other information in there is uh, correct. And the second amendment change is from our uh, agenda meeting on 16, number 16. And it is to change the wording from for a uh, cost of living rate increase to scratch that wording and to change that to a rate increase of 4.5%. Um, along with the amended agenda, I also move that we approve the minutes from uh, June 23rd's regular session. Second. Council, do you have any questions or comments regarding the agenda or the minutes either? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I move that we receive, place on file, and approve the consent agenda, items 1A through B31. Also, with the approval of the consent agenda, I move that we make our bills payment, which will be read by our finance chair. The bills this week are $2,588,181.49. Second. Council, do you have any questions or comments regarding the consent agenda? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Schmidt. Just had a quick question on the uh, beer, liquor, and wine license. I noticed that uh, one of those is an expiration date of February 15. Uh, so did their previous license expire February 14, or is that a six no. month? Or uh, I was curious about that. And, and the other ones are kind of odd dates, too, considering this is July. Right. Uh, they are odd, Steve. And, and uh, as long as a license holder timely files their application, if there is a uh, missing piece of information, if fire hasn't signed off on it and the police hasn't signed off of it, or if there's some missing piece of information, as long as it's a renewal license, if it's what's called timely filed, then it is good until that quirk, whatever it might be, gets worked out. These were all timely filed. We have an issue right now with our liquor licenses that uh, became apparent to me to just today. But when the council adopted the new uh, uh, ordinances regarding liquor licenses, and we identified the uh, limited use alcohol license, being a license that the um, majority of the profits are derived from the sale of something other than alcohol, which is a limited use sale. Mm -hmm. We required those owners to, those license holders, to sign annually an affidavit that they still meet that criteria, which is a change for, they've never had to do that before. So what has happened is many of those are longstanding businesses that have been in business for a long time, some large chain restaurants, et cetera, that have never had to sign that affidavit on an annual basis before. That has slipped through the cracks. Uh, we have several, you're going to be seeing in the next couple of weeks, several licenses that will come through that will actually have an expiration date in the past, but they were timely filed, so they have not violated any law. We are going to get them all current, and we will have a new and better system going forward for notifying those limited-use sales that they have to annually sign that affidavit. Thank you. Did I explain that correctly? Yes, and staff has scheduled a meeting to see if we can figure out a better way to state, streamline the process. So okay. hopefully by next week we'll have that in place. Very good. Thank you. Are there further questions? Good question, though. Uh, it's a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, would you read the roll, please? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welker? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. And before we move on, we have, I have several people to recognize. First of all, uh, our friend Robert Reisinger. Bob, you're in the audience. Why don't you stand up so folks can see you. Uh, Bob has asked to uh, serve on our Board of Adjustment, and I think you'll be an, an excellent choice for that position, Bob. You've got lots of experience both with boards and commissions and in that arena. So thank you for giving of your time, and thank you for volunteering to serve on the board. We appreciate that. Uh, also, we have some people that uh, are new hires to the city, and I always like to recognize them, and I'm not sure 
Uh, I know that Jonathan Schmidt is not here, who has been appointed to our Park Maintenance 2 Forestry Division. Uh, Mark Bagenstoss, Mark, are you here? Okay, Mark has uh, been appointed to an equipment operator in the street department, and Carrie Gleason. Carrie, are you here? Carrie, why don't you stand up? Hi. Carrie has been appointed uh, as our Waterloo Center for the Arts uh, events coordinator. Carrie, a, a super important position, and it's kind of a new position for us, something that we're really looking forward to you uh, uh, getting your teeth into, so to speak, and, and running with that. So thank you for coming on board. I look forward to a long and prosperous relationship for both entities. So thank you. Uh, welcome aboard. Uh, and with that, uh, both Carrie and Bob, you're welcome to stay for as long as you wish through the meeting, uh, but you don't have to and you won't offend anybody if you uh, choose not to stay. So just a little heads up there. Uh, and beyond that, uh, I think we're done. Mr. Item number two. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Schmidt. Item number two, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing, and that's for the metal roofing restoration on the snow removal equipment building at the Waterloo Regional Airport. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes, and the hearing is now open. Madam Clerk, were there any written objections on file to the uh, roof restoration at the airport? There will not. There will not. Let's try that again. There were no written or oral um, comments on file. I will just note um, for those in the audience that we are using the timer now per oh, council's right. new um, policy that was adopted uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, so individuals that ask to speak during the hearing will be given three minutes and the timer will go off. You'll have the lights up there that indicate um, yellow starts to give you a warning that it's about up and then when it's red, um, your time is up. If you've pre-registered, you will receive five minutes. So that will be at the podium from now on. And the, and the clerk will keep that time, yes. not the mayor. So hopefully the clerk will not forget to punch the buttons and we'll do it in a timely and orderly manner. Uh, thank you, and I, really, I knew there was something else I was gonna say at the, and I couldn't, uh, okay. I couldn't bring it to mind. That's why I'm pushing start and stop. There you go, okay. Uh, Motion to close the hearing. <laughs> let, let, me, let me see if there's anybody in the audience that wants to speak first. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak either for or against the metal roof restoration at the airport? A second time. Now, there is a motion and a second to, to close the hearing. Council, do you have any comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution confirming approval of plans, specifications, form of contract, etc. Second. Madam Clerk, it's a roll call vote. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Wilford? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Thank you. Very good. The motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt resolution ordering construction. Second. Madam Clerk? Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Wilford? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Very good. Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file and instruct city clerk to read bids and refer to airport director for review. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same side. Motion carries. Madam Clerk. There was one bid. She was speaking to that microphone as good as she could. Thanks. There was one bid from Modern Builders, Inc. of Janesville, Iowa. The bid security was 5%. The bid amount was sixty-six thousand three hundred and fifty dollars. Six Susie. six. I think that's the wrong bid. You got to turn around. Pella. That's right, Pella Roofing. Yeah. The template wrong. Sorry about that. That's all right. There was one bid from Pella Roofing and Insulation Inc. <laughs> from Benton, Iowa. The bid amount is twenty-seven thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars. Two seven comma nine five zero point zero zero. Very good. Good bid. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you can see what happens when we take a week off. We all get just a little. Discombobulated here, so. Huh. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart. I'd like to make a motion to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing for the replacement of the bifold door on hangar number two at the Waterloo Regional Airport. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries, Madam, and the hearing is now open. Madam Clerk, are there any written objections on file? There were none. Anyone in the audience that would like to speak either for or against replacing the bifold door at the Waterloo Regional Airport? A second time. Mr. Mayor, I move to close the hearing. Second. Council, do you have any questions or comments? No, sir. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Mr. Mayor. Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt a resolution confirming approval of plans, specifications, form of contract, et cetera. Second. It's a roll call vote, Madam Clerk. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Wilper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt a resolution ordering construction. Second. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Wilper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I move to receive and file and instruct city clerk to read bids and refer to airport director for a review. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Madam Clerk, please. Uh, this time we can do Modern aye. Builders. This bid was from Modern Builders, Inc. of Janesville, Iowa. Bid security of 5% and a bid amount of $66,350, Mr. Thank Mr. you, Mr. Mayor. Madam Clerk. Mr. Mayor, I have a quick question. Yes, On sir. the motion to receive and file and instruct city clerk, shouldn't that just be to read bids? Because has he already reviewed and kind of or? Well, it's depending. I mean, we opened them Thursday night. They have <coughs> okay. Thursday afternoon. So we're okay. still going to say to give them for review unless they've already had a chance. So. All right. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Uh, resolutions, please. Four, five, and six. Let's do three at a time. Mr. Mayor. Ms. Cole. I move we adopt a resolution approving the purchase and installation of one sixty-five by one hundred foot fabric truss building to be used as salt storage from clear span fabric structures, Dyersville, in the amount of sixty-two thousand eight hundred and forty-eight dollars and twenty cents. Five is a resolution approving the award of contract to Aspro Inc. of Waterloo in the amount of $61,110, including alternate one, in conjunction with the FY 2015 Public Works Facility Salt Building Base Construction. And six is a resolution approving two speed humps on Hummingbird Circle between Sarah Drive and Southtown Drive. Second. Council, do you have any questions or comments on four, five, or six? Mm -hmm. Roll call vote, Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morris? Yes. Very good. Those motions carry. The next three, please. Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Morris. I'd like to make a resolution approving creative services agreement with Helm Associates Incorporated of Waterloo, Iowa, in the amount not to exceed $15,000 for the pedestrian and motorcyclist safety awareness campaign and authorize the mayor to execute said document. And number eight, a resolution approving agreement with Blackhawk County Gaming Association for a grant in the amount of $90,000 with the city match of $15,000 to be used for a new Burns Park Tennis Headquarters building and authorize mayor to execute said document. And number nine, a resolution approving the re-implementation of the Neighborhood Watch Patrol program. Second. Council, do you have any questions or comments regarding those three, seven, eight, or nine? Mr. Mayor, Mr. Morris, uh, Chief Tra or Director Trauco, um, it's regarding, uh, I, I, the other day mentioned about uh, trying to just specify that um, the people who would be involved with this would be assigned only to the neighborhoods where uh, they are part of a neighborhood association. Dan Trelka, Director of Safety Services, that's a criteria we'll add to it, yes. Okay. Then the other thing, and I forgot to ask the other day, was um, are any of the people who would be in these vehicles allowed to be armed? No. Okay, thank you. Further questions? Mr. Mayor, Mr. Um, Mayor. you know, once the word kind of got out about this, because in the past it was primarily Church Row and West Central Neighborhood that had used this in the past. Yes. And uh, I think some of the drivers just kind of covered both neighborhoods because they're adjoining and uh, you know depending on how long you're going to drive you can only drive the same street so many times um, but I have gotten calls from uh, Walnut neighborhood and also Roosevelt with an interest in that so we're going to have some kind of a schedule put together so that assuming those neighborhoods were able to provide both fuel and volunteers that you know because I know a couple years ago people came down to get the car and it wasn't there because somebody else was using it so to make sure that we've got some kind of orderly schedule going on to uh, make sure we accommodate anybody that wants to participate in this yes yeah okay yes. thank you very good thank you further comments or questions <coughs> madam clerk it's a roll call vote on those please mr hart yes miss cole 
Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Motion is carried. Next three, please. 10, 11, and 12. Mr. Mayor? Mr. Welper? Number 10 is a resolution approving extending the employment contract for Jen for Jack Steenbrook for a period of 90 days in amount not to exceed $2,000. Number 11 is a resolution approving a bid received from Signs by Tomorrow of Cedar Falls, Iowa for the graphic installation of police department patrol cars in the amount of $2,970 and authorize department to have graphics installed. Number 12 is a resolution approving a bid received from Wirtz, Wirtz's Uniforms of Cedar Falls, Iowa for the police department fiscal year 15 uniforms and supplies in the amount not to exceed $21,000. Second. Council, do you have any questions or comments regarding those three, 10, 11, or 12? Madam Clerk. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Motions carry. Next three, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart? I move to adopt a resolution approving bid received from Electronic Engineering of Waterloo, Iowa for the FY 2015 equipment installation in six new patrol cars and purchase of needed equipment to outfit those cars in the amount of $12,229.68 per squad car. 14, I move to adopt a resolution approving completion of project and recommendation of acceptance of work performed by Nichols Construction, Inc. of Evansdale, Iowa in the amount of $68,000 for the FY 2014 Cedar Vista Shelter Project. In 15, I move to adopt a resolution approving completion of project and recommendation of acceptance of work performed by D&G Metal Works of Waterloo, Iowa in the amount of $78,120 for the FY 2014 boat house roof replacement. Second. Council, do you have any questions or comments regarding those three, 13, 14, or 15? Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Very good. The motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, there are four left. Can someone take all four? Mr. Mayor? Ms. Cole? I move we adopt a resolution approving the management transportation and land application portion of the biosolids contract with Nutraject of Hudson for a rate increase of 4.5%. The new rate will be increased from $17.10 weight per ton to $17.88 weight per ton, effective August 1st. 17 is a resolution approving a request by Deer Creek Development, LLC, for the preliminary and final plat of Greenbelt Center plat number six and request for a variance to the requirements of the subdivision ordinance in section 2.31. 18 is a resolution approving enterprise zone certification for the expansion of the enterprise zone to include property bounded by West Mullen Avenue, Jefferson Street, and Westfield Avenue, locally known as the former Grand Hotel site, and authorize Mayor and City Clerk to execute said document. And 19 is a resolution approving the environmental covenant at the former construction machinery site located at 625 Glen. Avenue and authorize mayor and city clerk to execute said document. Second. Thank you, Ms. Cole. Council, questions or comments regarding any of those four? 16, 17, 18, or 19? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Smith. I would just like to comment on uh, item number 16. I know uh, Department Head Smith mentioned Thursday morning at the meeting, but this company has not had a rate increase for several years. Is that correct, Larry? And so I did just want to point that out that that 4.5% might be kind of a jump in some people's minds, but yeah, they haven't had one for a number of years, so I just want to point that out. Thank you, Mr. Schmidt. Are there further comments? Madam Clerk, please, it's a roll call vote. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. All right, good. The motion carries. Uh, ordinances, please. Item number 20. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Schmidt. Item number 20 is a motion to receive, file, consider, and pass for the third time and adopt an ordinance vacating a portion of LaPorte Road, Frontage Road, generally located between Easton Avenue and Lorraine Avenues, uh, and that's a request of Howard L. Allen Investments to vacate and enter into a development agreement with Howard L. Allen Investments, Inc. to sell and convey for $1 a portion of the LaPorte Road frontage road, generally located between Easton Avenue and Lorraine Avenue for the construction of a 3,750-square-foot commercial building. Second. 
Very good. Council, uh, questions or comments regarding this item? Yeah, yes, Mr. Mayor. I, I was hoping that I'd be able to talk to Mr. Allen if he was here. Thank you, Mr. Morrissey. I, uh, Mr. Allen, would you please uh, come to the microphone for us? <coughs> Just give us your name and your address, if you would, please. Uh, Howard Allen, 3602 West First Street. Okay. Falls. Thanks, Howard. And Mr. Morrissey, uh, there you are. Yes, M Mr. Allen, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, and uh, uh, I was wanting to ask you a few things about this. Are you requesting to, uh, to vacate a portion of the LaPorte Road frontage road closest to Easton Avenue, is that right? Correct. Okay, and this is the city of Waterloo's property that you're asking being vacated, is that correct? correct. It's owned by, by the people of Waterloo? Yes. Okay, and uh, the city is offering you this land and vacating it, and you're asking this, and part of that is this development agreement, which includes that land going to you for a dollar? Yes. Okay, <coughs> and then there's this easement over, under, and upon um, that will be in effect, is that correct, for that land? I'm not sure of it. No. No, can you speak to the easement if there is one, please? Noel Anderson, Community Planning and Development Director. Yeah, there's a sanitary sewer line, um, a storm sewer line, and overhead electric lines in the area to be vacated, so the easement will be retained as part of the, the conveyance. So we'll retain the easement then. Okay. Does that mean that? Uh, no building can be put on that then, no. That is correct. He can put a parking lot on there, um, but not a building because of the underground sewer lines. Okay, okay. Um, and um, I understand, that Mr. Allen, that you're a developer and uh, that you've been developing within the city for some time, and you've had uh, past agreements with the city for previous developments. Yes. Okay, and. Um, this is in the Cura District, and are you granted any kind of tax abatement, or have you been granted tax abatements in the past? Uh, I think the building I built across the street, we got that. Will, will this, no, will this building have a Cura tax abatements to it? No, well, Anderson Community Planning and Development Director, this is this building would be eligible for the Cura, yes. Okay, um, and again, that's a city uh, program. Uh, okay, and um, um, I'm going to switch this a little bit. Uh, you own the property and business at 319 Jefferson? Um, I'll comment on the Port Road. I'm not going to comment anything else. Well, it's something that I'd like you to answer, Mr. Allen. No, I'll comment on the Port Road is all I'm going to comment on. And, and the reason why I'm asking that is because uh, I understand that uh, the city wants to develop that area down there. And it's already being developed. And one of the concerns I had, and I was hoping that you would address this, is that there's a uh, a uh, sort of like kids care center there for people. You know, if any questions, you can talk to my attorney, Eric Johnson. I'm not going to answer anything other than the Port Road. I mean, I don't have to do this project. I was going to build a building there. I mean, I don't have to do this. You can keep the street. OK, thank you. Okay. If you don't want to answer any questions, I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Mr. Morrissey. Uh, are, are there further questions or comments regarding this item? <laughs> Madam Clerk, it's a roll call vote. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? No. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution authorizing sale and conveyance and authorize city attorney to prepare and deliver deed accordingly. Second. Madam Clerk. Mr. Morrissey? No. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution approving development agreement and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute said document. Second. Madam Clerk, that's a roll call. Mr. Wilper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? No. Very good. The motion carries. And that was the third and final reading of that uh, item. Item 21, please. 
Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart. Move to receive file considering pass for the second time an ordinance vacating the west 40 feet of David Street located south of West Parker Street subject to the retention of a utility easement over under and upon the entire area to be vacated. And that's a request by Dennis Hagenow to vacate the west 40 feet of David Street located south of West Parker Street subject to the retention of utility easement over under and upon the entire area to be vacated. Second. Very good. Uh, I believe there's someone here to speak to this item. Uh, sir, if you'd come to the microphone, please, and just give us your name and address, please. My name is Steve Scram. Uh, my work address here in town is 620 Lafayette Street. I work at the Beecher Law Firm. Steve, what's your last name again? Scram, S-K-R-A-M. Thank you very much. Um, we represent the Jet Lounge, who is a neighbor to this easement property. Um, and the Jet Lounge is opposed to the passage of this ordinance and the vacation of David Street. Um, first, this easement has been in existence since 1903, so for well over 100 years, the public has had the right to use this easement. Uh, the easement was in use in 2005 when my clients purchased the, the jet lounge, and my client's predecessors in title had also relied on this easement for access to the building at that time. Um, and so, you know, the public use of the street was evident um, at the time my clients purchased the property and they continued to use the property as such after they purchased it. Um, my client's abstract also shows this easement. Um, so when they had their title opinion done, they thought they could reasonably rely on having this easement continue into the future. Um, in 2008, my clients added a large addition to the jet lounge, <coughs> and in so doing, they continued their reliance on David Street, um, which part of that, with the, with the vacation, a part of that uh, street, um, it will limit access to, for my clients, um, and they're concerned about what that will do to their business. Um, second, my clients chose not to participate in the acquisition of David Street, which is ultimately sold to Mr. Hagenau, who's the applicant in this case. Because of the public easement, because of the public easement, my clients saw no value to owning land that was burdened by such an extensive public easement. The concern now that we have is the slippery slope that we appear to be approaching. Mr. Hagenau's original vacation application sought to vacate the entire David Street area, and that was denied by planning and zoning. The current ordinance seeks to vacate approximately half of the easement property, but our concern is that additional ordinances will continue to be proposed to whittle away at the easement even further in the future. This increases the uncertainty that the Jet Lounge has regarding its, its access and also increases the legal expense that it faces every time one of these requests is, is handled. Um, we believe that if Mr. Hagenau intended to use David Street for private purposes, he should have undergone this vacation uh, procedure before he purchased it, not after the fact. Last, my clients are upset and concerned about the process taken by Mr. Hagenau to obtain the easement property and the problems that it has caused to my clients. Mr. Hagenau obtained the David Street easement property in late 2012. By October of 2013, he illegally erected concrete barricades around David Street, which cut off much of the access to my client's property and severely hurt my client's business financially. In January of 2014, a letter from the city of Waterloo demanded that Mr. Hagenau remove the concrete barricades, which did not occur. In April, another letter was sent by the city of Waterloo to remove the barricades, and the barricades still were not removed. Um, in May, thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening. My name is Andy Huffman. I'm uh, one of the owners of the Jet Lounge. Uh, just to finish what Steve was saying, uh, in May, then uh, the blocks were finally moved, but it still has continued to damage our business. I've had uh, countless meetings with Planning and Zoning over the last nine months, and Planning and Zoning is fully aware of the fact <coughs> that this has been gone about the wrong way. Uh, in fact, it's my understanding that they're currently discussing with the city attorneys about policy change because of this matter. Mr. Hagenau did this whole process completely backwards. Planning and Zoning told him in 2012 they would allow a quick claim deed, but would reserve all rights to the easement of over 100 years. Mr. Hagenau bought the land knowing this. He now wants to claim he has liability issues because the city won't vacate the easement. That makes no sense. He knew this when he bought the land. Now he wants to backdoor the easement, so to speak. He should, have, he, should have bought, he should have bought the land contingent on the easement being lifted, but he didn't do that. 
It's simply an end around, it's what it is. I looked into buying this land, as, as Steve said, seven years ago when I was preparing a $250,000 expansion. My attorney spoke with plan zoning. At that time, it was learned about the easement and that the easement would stay in place. Truthfully, I shouldn't be standing before you guys here today because I've tried to negotiate with Mr. Hagenau. I've offered him four times the value of what he paid for this parcel. He isn't even willing to offer me to buy any of it. Let's take that back, the whole parcel. What he is offering to sell me is 20 feet for $10,000. He paid $250 for this land a year and a half ago and now wants me to pay him $10,000 for this parcel. That's nothing short of extortion in my book. By vacating this easement, you are really saying this is our city, that our city will allow a person to buy a cheap piece of land and then go to the city to try to backdoor an easement. You're saying do it your own way, not the way our policies are in place. He did this knowing it was gonna damage my business, and it did. I've lost 40% of my revenue over the last nine months due to the illegal blockage. If you allow this vacate, you're allowing him to create this overvalue of the property, which ultimately allows him to force me to pay this ridiculous amount of money. This illegal blockage has put my business in a very bad position. The people playing zoning know this. It's wrong. I know it's wrong. And I hope you guys tonight can see that it's wrong. This should have never ha been allowed to happen. It needs to be corrected today and for the future of our city. Thanks, Thanks, Andy. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Further comments uh, from anyone in the audience regarding uh, item 21? Yes, sir. Come to the microphone, please. Corey Tharp. I own and operate Corky's Car Care uh, right next door to the Jet Lounge. Uh, throughout this whole process, this be, we use the parking lot in the back um, of the Jet for our customer parking. Um, throughout this whole process, it's been very difficult to use any parking lot because it's been shortened so much. So, you know, it's been a, uh, it's been real hard for all of us around there. Uh, the, the alley has been blocked. So now there's one alley between both of my businesses that just, I mean, tri triple or quadruple use. You know, potholes have been created larger, uh, the dust flying, and, and just the, the traffic's been been terrible. So, comment on that. Thanks Thank uh, very much, Corey. Anyone else from the audience that would like to comment on this item? Council, comment or questions? Mr. Morrissey? Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, is, is Mr. Hagenau here? I assume not, but uh, Mr. Hagenau, are you here? Or his attorney? It appears no. Well, I was hoping they'd be here because I wanted to ask him some questions, so. Okay, but he's not. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Eric, is Eric Schrader? Eric? Oh, good. Can ask him. Sir? Yes, Eric. I was wondering, do you know if there's been any talk by Mr. Hagenau of doing anything with the east 40 feet of this, if this vacate was to be approved? It is Eric Schrader, city planner. It is my understanding that the applicant and the applicant's attorneys have had discussions about um, requesting to vacate the east 40 feet as well. The city's um, staff's response to that was to make it clear that we would not support, uh, we would not recommend approval of a vacate of the east 40 feet unless it included an agreement with the east property owner, the Jet Lounge. So okay. the planning and zoning staff made a recommendation of approval of the vacate of the west 40 feet based on our determination, our assumption that it would provide sufficient access to the Jet uh, on the remaining east 40 feet and would not negatively impact. They've made some comments otherwise, but based on our assumption of that, we recommended approval. The Planning Commission went ahead and recommended approval vacating just the west 40 feet. Yes, I believe they do intend to try and vacate all or a portion of the additional east 40 feet, but from a staff point standpoint, we've made that clear that that will need to include an agreement with the Jet Lounge. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Eric, um, is there, um, based upon what we have before us, is there 
or could there possibly be a financial impact to or hardship to the jet lounge and to I think it's Cork Corky's mm -hmm. is that I know I mean, they've indicated yes. I, I, it's a little hard for me to say for sure no. Our thought was no because with the east 40 feet still remaining open and the barricades have been moved back to get that east 40 feet open, uh, it does provide what appears to be sufficient access room um, for vehicles to still get in through that route. There's a, the, It's an 80-foot wide um, easement but the actual you know physical drive is 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 less than that i don't have the exact dimensions the actual access point to the street is, was centered <coughs> relatively uh, well uh, on the center of that 80 feet and not vacating the east 40 feet still left uh, a pretty substantial portion of that access point out onto the street so that was kind of our thought of no but obviously the uh the, the jets otherwise. contend otherwise. Is there anyone else that has Mr. questions Mayor, of Eric? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. If, if we don't vacate it, since it's an easement for road purposes, are we maintaining that as a street then? <laughs> um, and the street department or uh, others might be able to address that. It is. It was uh, a easement granted from the railroad to the city to maintain it for street purposes. Uh, I, th I think the city has done very minimal maintenance to it as a street. The city has other um, streets that are a public street, but the city provides fairly minimal maintenance, and oftentimes maintenance is just kind of handled by adjoining property owners because they don't want to wait for the city to, to do it. It, it really, th there's utilities through it, so there's clearly a need for a utility easement. As for a public access, since the reconfiguration of David Street, Broadway, and the bend around there, it doesn't go through. So it's a, a, a sh very shortcut, you know, short stub, dead end right of way that essentially only serves those two adjoining property owners primarily. So it's really not needed for public access, which is why the city was okay with vacating all of it as long as the parties could come to an agreement. It's just been difficult getting the parties to come to an agreement. Other questions of Eric? The, the fact that you have an easement on it does not require you to maintain it as a street. Thanks, Mr. Walsh. Any other questions of Eric? Any other questions, period? <coughs> Council, this is the second reading on this. Uh, passage tonight uh, will mean passage on the second time. It can then either suspend the rules and pass the third time, or it can go to a third reading, or it can fail tonight. Uh, Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Hart. No. Ms. Cole? No. Mr. Jones? No. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? No. Mr. Welper? Yes. Very good, thank you. The motion fails on the second reading. Uh, so uh, there you go. Gentlemen, you uh, got your, your wish, and uh, the easement will not be granted. Item number 22, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart. Mooter C. File consider and pass for the second time an ordinance amending ordinance number 5079 as amended City of Waterloo zoning ordinance by amending the official zoning map referred to in section 10 4 4, approving a site plan amendment on certain property for the request by Robeson Home, Inc. of Cedar Rapids, Iowa, for, <coughs> for a site plan amendment to the R3RP plan, multiple residence district for 148 new dwelling units located on 20.63 acres of land generally located east of Morning Dove Drive. Second. Very good. Uh, council, uh, there's a motion and second. I know there are people in the audience that would like to speak to this. I know Mr. Bockenstedt has called the clerk's office and, and requested time again tonight. Uh, and I made a decision, Mr. Bockenstedt being aware of the five minute rule, asked uh, he can, he will have more than five minutes. Uh, <laughs> seven to eight, I think Ron said. He said uh, he could have somebody else read the, the rest of the comments, or he could just, if he could have the microphone for the full time, and I, I uh, agreed that Mr. Bakken said to have the microphone rather than splitting it up into two people saying the same thing. So uh, that's Mayor? speaking just of Mr. Bakken Mr. Morrissey, yes. Well, I'll wait for uh, 
I, 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 that was speaking specifically of Mr. Bockenstead. If anybody else comes to the microphone, they will be subject to the three-minute rule because Mr. Bockenstead is the only one signed up. Oh, well. Okay. Our comments are later. Thank yes, you. sir. Okay. I will take council comments after okay. public comments. Mr. Bockenstead. I have a couple questions. First okay, come to, the, come to the microphone, please, sir. Ron Bockenstead. Uh, in your uh, agenda, you say you're going to um, move the motion to the third reading. Is that correct? Unless it fails tonight, Mr. Bockenstead, it will go to the third reading. Yes. Okay, but uh, you're not going to bypass the rules tonight. That will be up to the council. Okay, the motion right. will be made to suspend the rules. Okay. I, I, that would be up to the council. All right. Very good. Thank you. I'm Ron Bach. Instead, I live at 1234 Hummingbird Circle in the Crossroads Estate Subdivision. And I'm here representing myself and the residents of the Crossroads Estate Subdivision. At this point, I'd like to have the people in the Crossroads Estate Subdivision stand uh, for, in supporting our position. Good crowd. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies. Um, I've got two subject areas I'd like to cover tonight. Uh, for the mayor and the council. I have also some follow-up questions on the last council meeting that I'd like to address. But, but the subject number one is, is the cro concern of the Crossroads Estates people uh, as it relates to the Prairie Meadows Estate. After further evaluation, we are now opposed to the construction of that as it is currently being proposed. I put together also a traffic flow projection that kind of supports some of our concerns because uh, when you put all these together, uh, it's going to be considerable. In the absence of an actual city uh, traffic study, I think it was the best that we could do at this time. So subject number one. The Crossroads Estate Subdivision residents con are concerned about the new construction of the Prairie Meadows as it's currently being proposed. Prairie Meadows Subdivision will cause our subdivision some very challenging traffic issues. Two weeks ago, we presented a petition with 100% support concerning the safety and the, of the residents and our children. This was a concern also voiced by Mr. Skogman in an email Mr. Skogman sent to Noel Anderson. Traffic congestion with the current proposed site uh, will be uh, greater because of the three, four, five, and six plexes being built next to our subdivision. We're opposed to that construction of the new subdivision site plan as it, it's being proposed. We want to maintain a uh, owner occupancy type of area. We do not want to become a future rental area because of the three, four, five, and six plexes, which will impact our future property values. Concerns among the residents also there is a natural, we should have a natural progression from single family and twin homes and there's just too many units in this subdivision, too close to our subdivision in this site plan. <coughs> With our current traffic dilemma being close to the mall and commercial activity, the increased traffic flow in the current proposal is just not acceptable. Beyond the current site proposal, there is a concern from our residents about the potential additional traffic that could be generated from the option Mr. Ropeson has on the next 20 acres east of the Prairie Meadows Estate subdivision. New subdivision uh, will have two basic uh, roads going east and west, one being uh, Morning Dove Drive and Silver Charm. These two streets can go all the way to Hess Road. Now we've developed an, an alternative route for shoppers uh, to utilize when they go shopping by using this subdivision as a back, our subdivision as a back way to go shopping and even to make doc go to doctor's appointments at Covenant. It's bad enough we got one bad uh, back way through our subdivision, much less being saddled with the second. As a result of all these concerns, we're asking the City Council to say no to the site plan approval for the Prairie Meadows Estates as it's currently being proposed. At the very least, we recommend you table the second and third reading of the Prairie Meadows Estates plan indefinitely to accommodate some of the concerns and deeds of our citizens. We would like to see, uh, see a complete new site plan be developed with single family and twin family homes instead of the current three, four, five, and six plexus. Traffic flow in this new subdivision and future subdivisions have to have their own outlet. 
We do not want to become a back way for our sh shoppers through our subdivision. Those shoppers' conveniences become our su subdivision safety concerns. A new comprehensive plan should be developed by community planning and, and development. This plan should be at an overview of 5,000 al foot altitude with a long-term view. Currently, I feel we're hovering, we feel you're hovering at a 500 foot altitude and using a short-term approach. This plan should not be a short-term piecemeal plan and, as it's currently being presented. We need to have a more long-range trajectory, trajectory in our planning process. Subject number two. In the absence of a traffic study completed by the city, I've put together some traffic studies. Would you hand those to Dan? I'm not going to go over line by line what, what this is in there. I'm going to leave these here for your review. But in the long run, what it's saying in a 24-hour period with the combined uh, our, our subdivision along with uh, the new subdivision and with the traffic that we are currently getting uh, as a back way from South Town Drive to Sarah Drive, it amounts to 2,643 vehicles per day. That doesn't look like a residential area to us. It looks like a commercial area. And I guess at this stage of the game, we, don't, uh, we do not include uh, the other traffic that from the mall area or the commercial business traffic generated on Sarah Drive and Southtown Drive, which is our ultimate outlet. It amounts to a great deal of traffic that we'd like to would, would go through our subdivision when, if the subdivisions are combined. Now, I'd like to have a, I'd like to follow up with Mayor uh, a little bit about a couple of issues. Number one, um, I'd like to commend Dan Trauka and his organization about the traffic that, uh, the truck traffic that's been going through there. It's been really subsided. It's been a dramatic difference. Uh, I had suggested to Dan a little bit ago, he probably needs to talk to FedEx. Uh, and I think the other thing that uh, was happening, we're seeing some Martinson trucks come through and also a couple truckloads of lumber that were going to the Robeson subdivision this past week. And I understand you can't get them all stopped, but we've done a dramatic job. And keep up the good work, Dan. The other thing I guess I'd like to say is uh, I'd like to thank the mayor and the council for the speed bump uh, ordinance. I think that's going to help us some. I think that's only part of the way. Uh, there's been some discussion this week with some of the members of the council of uh, a no pass-through type of uh, situation. I think that needs to be considered. That would reduce the traffic flow in our concerns. Uh, the other thing is, is the, as it was discussed last time, the, the council and mayor had suggested possibly getting construction type of access. Uh, and I don't know, I'd like to have an update on that as, if there's anything been done or could be done. Um, at that time, uh, I'd like to thank the mayor and the city council for their time. We would encourage you each, each of you, to not support the site plan as it's currently being presented. We don't say that we'd be against all site plans, but we are against this one. Uh, and I thank the council for their time, and I have an outline on, on my comments for the mayor and the council if they'd like to have them for future reference. Thank you. Like those? Sure. If you have copies, just give them to Dan. And, and I, I guess I would answer any questions that this, this uh, council would have, of course, with the mayor's consent. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Bockenstaff. Council, do you have any questions of, of Mr. Bockenstaff at this time? Thank you, sir. Mr. Mr. Mayor. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, Mr. Bockenstaff, I think that somewhere along the way I'd heard a mention that either you or some of the other neighbors uh, in the neighborhood when you bought those were told that that area was all going to be single-family development. Some of, the that some of the people that were sold homes indicated that that was the case. Now, it could have been misrepresented, but that's what they were told. Okay. Thank you. So it, it, I guess we, we're at the point folks that we're kind of feeling the squeeze mm -hmm. we're feeling the squeeze from the traffic that's coming from the mall area and we're feeling the squeeze from the traffic that could be potentially coming from the other area and that's why we're here tonight thank, thank you thank you mr blackenstead uh is there further comments from anyone in the audience i, 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 I appreciate not repeating what mr blackenstead has already said but uh, give us your name and your address please um <clears throat> jim meese from 1309 pintail drive to answer your question we built on Pintail, we took possession in January 
so we're fairly new up there, but we were told that whole area was zoned single and it, it did affect where we wanted to build. But um, my, my only concern and my wife's, uh, one, I would like to dispel the uh, Courier's editorial that the people that live in that area are against progress. Um, it's kind of a ridiculous claim. Uh, none of us are really saying don't build there. We're saying please take the time to do the traffic study to progress for progress sake can be bad. Progress has to be done with careful thought and planning and I, I sincerely don't believe that the whole thing would be at risk if they had to wait a while and I, I'm not leaning towards really believing that we'll wait and build a road sometime later if we do another 20 acres. Um, that's a lot of promises with nothing to back it with. So I, we just, you know, the public safety should be the number one thing and I, th I think we're missing it here if we don't do the right studies and take our time. So thanks. Thanks, Jim. Is there anyone else in the audience at this time? Council? Uh, Mr. Morrissey, you had questions or comments? Mr. Mayor, I, I, I don't know it would, if this is just for discussion uh, would be a time to try to table this to give the, the uh, uh, people from the neighborhood as well as the developer a chance to uh, sit down, meet together, and try to come up with something, something that's agreeable. Mm -hmm. uh, th that's certainly an option, uh, Pat, and if you'd like to make that motion, but uh, generally speaking, I mean, we're, we're, we have been asked to approve a site plan. And I'm not sure what so. tabling a site plan request would do. I, 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 don't, I, I don't know if, if the, if the uh, uh, if the, the site plan as it's presented tonight passes, then it passes. If it fails, then it fails. Uh, and I'm assuming, and only assuming, I, and again, I risk putting words in the developer's mouth, which I shouldn't do, but if this site plan were to fail, I'm assuming that they might work on another site plan to bring back to us. Now, I don't know that at all, but uh, it's up to you. If you would like to, to table the issue, you can make that motion and we'll see where it goes. Well, I, I was just wondering, and I don't know if Mr. Bockenstedt knows this, um, uh, if there have been discussions between you and the Robson Home developers. Sit down discussions with. All right, uh, this afternoon I had a call from Todd Hopple mm -hmm. at Noel given my phone number and we started a dialogue. And at that time I said that I had to maintain our position until such time as we sat down. He's, a, he's not opposed to sitting down, and I'm not opposed to sitting down. And he and I talked about some issues, but I think at this point in time, allowing us to sit down and communicate a little bit here by tabling it for a week or two is not going to be the end of the world. So I guess my, my challenge to the council is, uh, as Jim says, we, we, there's, there's different types of development. There's good development, there's poor development, and then there's development that's got some issues. And I think this development has got some issues. I think they can be worked through. I think the city could help us here. Uh, you know, if we can reduce the traffic flow from the mall and from the other area, that reduces the overall traffic. Maybe we can go along with part of the three, four, five, and six plexes, but maybe there has to be a buffer with uh, single family and twin homes in between. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so there are some options. Thanks, Ron. Mr. Mayor, with that, I'd like to make a motion to table this until July 28th. Mr. Mayor. Um, yes, Mr. Schmidt. Could I ask a question before we? Sure. Okay. Well, and there's no second yet either, okay. so. Could we uh, have either Mr. Schrader or Mr. Anderson uh, talk a little bit about what's gone into this and, and if this is defeated, you know, you know, what this motion specifically does do and what defeating this motion specifically does do? No, you want to give it a shot? Please. Noel Anderson, Community Planning Development Director. Um, in terms of what's gone into this, um, you know, and, and Ron talked a little bit about the comprehensive plan, of course. By state code, the, uh, the zoning ordinance and all the zoning actions are defined by a comprehensive plan by the City of Waterloo. Um, our comprehensive plan was last updated, I believe, in 2006. Um, 
before that it was adopted back in 1978. All the versions, there's probably been about four versions from here till there, um, have all showed this as a multifamily area. Um, the zoning has been in place since 1969 um, to show this as a multifamily area. The plan residence district versus just the strict R3, which it is further to the east, the plan district gives um, the city a little bit more um, ability to work with developers in trying to make sure that we are planning the future stages for infrastructure, for streets, for layouts, um, for connections that will occur later. Um, so we've, we've been working with them through that. Um, you know, from a land use perspective, uh, we have some single family homes and we have some uh, multifamily homes that have been out there since about, you know, back to going back to 2005 and earlier. Um, Mr. Robeson is the one that built the, uh, the two different sections of uh, <coughs> twin homes along uh, uh, Morning Dove Drive. Um, this next section goes from the twin homes to the four plexes and three plexes bordering that um, with some later six plexes in the, in the later phases further to the east and closer to crossroads. So from a land use perspective, um, this is generally how you go from a less dense to a more dense area. Um, I would note that this area is bounded by U.S. Highway 20 to the south and the largest commercial area in Blackhawk County to the north in Crossroads Center. Um, so that's kind of the perspective of where we've looked at it from a staff standpoint and a planning standpoint. Um, in terms of what tabling it uh, might do, um, the developer is here. They can probably answer that better than I. So if, if this is uh, defeated, if this motion is defeated, where does that put things? Um, if it's defeated, if they were to change a site plan or anything like that, they would have to go back to Planning Commission. And in terms of what they would do if it's defeated, again, I'd let the developer answer that. May I respond there? Just a second, Ron, if, if, please. Well, and, and the only other thing I was going to mention, I know Councilman Lind and, and Welper and I went out and met with some of the folks and took a, a drive, and I think, you know, I think speaking on behalf of the three of us anyhow there is some concerns from a uh, public safety standpoint not only with the traffic but also with the width of those roads so i don't know if future roads no would necessarily be wider because those roads and, and you know thinking about it not only from a traffic standpoint but also public safety fire ambulance that type of thing the roads seem to be uh more narrow than most of the the roads in waterloo um we happened to take that tour on Monday during the big water event, and we ended up over in that Shadow Creek development, which I think is similar to what the six-plex development here would be. And uh, I mean, that just looked like a real challenging uh, setup there with all that water with nowhere to go, number one. And, and again, number two, I could not see how fire trucks or ambulances could get into that development and get back out with, with the way that one is set up. Um, and then, and then the other thing, and I think I heard you just talking about this, that there will be this gradual development of single homes to duplexes, to fourplexes, to sixplexes. We're not going to have sixplexes next to single family homes. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. okay. Thank you. Uh, well, I would just note the Shadow Creek one has the, the north south road there, Shookai Drive, is a public street. These are all proposed to be public streets. The east west street, um, Lois Lane, there is a private street, so it could have different standards. Yeah, Mr. Hoppel, I know you're here tonight, and rather than us trying to, particularly me, trying to put words in your mouth, the question has been raised a couple of times <coughs> as to what the developer's stance would be, either on a motion to table or uh, if it, if the motion as uh, presented is, fails. Can you uh, shed yes, some light uh, on that? Todd Hoppel with Anderson Bogart Engineers representing uh, Robson Homes. Uh, we are open to tabling this for a few weeks and working through the neighborhood and trying to find a compromise on a few issues. So that's that would be our proposal at this point. Okay. Good. Very good. Does anybody have questions of the developer as, as he's here at this time? Ms. Cole? I'm just happy to hear that you're willing to work with the neighbors. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Yep. Can I repeat okay. my okay. okay. Very quickly, Ron, you've already been up twice. This is uh, this I, just, I would just like to say I, I appreciate them being here. Okay. And there are going to be some six plexes in this subdivision. Yeah, thank you. Um, I just the, motion, the motion has been made, but I have received no second, second. yet to table. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Question. 
I thought we had to act on this motion before we... A motion to table will supersede that. We can, okay. A motion to table can take this, okay. can table it. All right. So uh, that is kind of acting on it, Tom, but a motion to table supersedes okay. it. It's about the only thing that it does. We kind of had something like that right. a few weeks ago. Right. Uh, there is a motion and a second. However, Mr. Hart has a comment. I, I think we're fine. I'm, I'm fine. Okay. Uh, and and we, uh, the motion was to table till July 28th. Yes, three uh, weeks. Three weeks. Uh, and there is a second. Uh, let's do a roll call vote on that, Madam Clerk, please. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Very good. The motion is tabled until July 28th. And I would, don't know who we'll leave it up to for the contractor and the uh, developer and the neighbors to get together, but uh, let's please make sure that happens. Maybe we can facilitate uh, uh, to yeah. some degree. Thank you. Very good. Uh, I agree. And item number 23, please. Table. Sure. Uh, I, I, yeah, let's. Yes. I'm sorry. I was oh, just, just going to read 23. We yeah. just need a table. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Table number 23. Yeah. yeah, make a motion to table number 23. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'm sorry, that has to be a roll call vote. Well, and also for the three weeks as well. Oh, yeah, to, uh, July 28th. Okay, so uh, item number 23, there's a motion and a second to table till uh, July 28th, and it, it requires a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lund? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Wilker? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Council. And to all of those here, if, if you'd like to leave, I'll, I'll give you a couple minutes before we move on uh, to, to clear the chambers. If you would please take your conversations outside, that would be much appreciated so we can carry on. Thank you. Uh, let's, do, uh, let's do 25 and 26. I think we can do both of those together, please. 24. I'm sorry, 24, I skipped. Let's do item number 24, please. Mr. Mayor, I Mr. move Hart. to adopt a resolution approving award of contract to Veith Construction Corporation of Cedar Falls, Iowa in the amount of $122,857.40 and approving the contract bonds and certificate of insurance in conjunction with the FY 2014 treatment plant levy tree removal contract number 868 and authorize Mayor and City Clerk to execute said document. 25, I move to approve change order number one. For Let, let's just stop with 24, May, please, Mr. Hart. Okay. Uh, uh, let's, let's just take 24 by itself. It's a resolution, so there is a motion and a second. Uh, Council, do you have any comments or questions? No. It's a uh, roll call vote, Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Schmidt. Yes. Mr. Lynn. Yes. Mr. Morrissey. Yes. Mr. Welper. Yes. Mr. Hart. Yes. Ms. Cole. Yes. Mr. Jones. Yes. Now, somebody would like to take 25 and 26, that would be great. Mr. Mayor. Ms. Cole. I move we approve change order number one for an increase of $22,069.42 for work performed by Iowa Erosion Control Inc. of Victor, Iowa for the FY 2014 Airline Highway Rehabilitation contract number 827 and authorize Mayor and City Clerk to execute said document. I move that and uh, number 26, I move we approve change order number one for an increase of $65,811.44 for work performed by Peterson Contractors, Inc. of Rhinebeck for the FY 2014 Fourth Street Bridge Slope Protection and River Wall Repairs, contract number 855, and authorize Mayor and City Clerk to execute said document. Second. Council, do you have any questions on 25 or 26? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Those motions carry. Item 27, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart. Let me take both to this one. Sure. Um, in 27, I move to instruct Public Works Director to prepare specifications, bid documents, et cetera, for the FY 2015 Seal Coat Program. And in 28, I move to instruct Building Official Maintenance Administrator to prepare plan specifications, form of contract, et cetera, for the East 5th Street parking ramp garage repairs. Second. Council, do you have questions? 
All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Mr. Mayor, for 27 and 28, I move to receive and file specifications, bid documents, etc., in form of contracts. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Mr. Mayor, for those items, I move to adopt a resolution preliminary approving specifications, bid documents, plans, and form of contract. Second. Madam Clerk, it's a roll call vote, please. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Wolper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, in 27, I move to adopt a resolution setting date of, date of bid opening as July 17, 2014, and public hearing as July 21, 2014, and 28, to set the bid opening as July 24, 2014, and the public hearing as July 28, 2014, and instruct the city clerk to publish notice of specifications, bid documents, and taking of bids. Second. Madam Clerk, it's a roll call vote on both. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welfer? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Mr. Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Sure, yes. Yes, both of you. <laughs> Very good. The motion's carried. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of our regularly scheduled business for tonight. Uh, it, it is time for oral presentations. I have two people signed up that would like to speak with us tonight, Mr. Josh Wilson and Mr. Steve Murphy. So whoever would like to be first, come on up, please. And uh, keep in mind that uh, these two gentlemen have called into the clerk's office and have requested the five-minute time limit, and they have it. Mr. Murphy. Please, Steve, will give us your name and address, please. Hi, Steve Murphy, 124 Terrace Drive. Uh, I'm going to try and quickly cover three topics tonight, if time allows. Um, so I sat through as many of the budget hearings as I could make, and what I learned is we struggled to find enough funds. Um, we certainly seem to struggle to find enough funds to more fully staff emergency services, and the only idea I've heard is we need to cut fire and cut police. And I want to kind of move the conversation to let's find some efficiencies. So with some help from a, a number of city employees, they've been super responsive. I've pulled both uh, the dump tickets and the time clock sheets for some of our sanitation workers. Um, there are four copies. If we could share those around. Dan, would you pass those you, around, you mind please? Doing that, Chief? Thank you for your time. Um, we're not getting what we're paying for. We're paying for four. 10-hour days and we are struggling to average an eight-hour day so just it's an Excel spreadsheet if you see zeros on time in and time out it means they weren't at work that day so um, when the wind blows we're even paying more for overtime sure. I tried to pick a couple of weeks in a three-month period I've got the time sheets from January February and March I tried to pick a week where most of the the Drivers were there that week, and we didn't have a holiday, and I tried to find a week where the wind didn't blow. Kind of hard to do in January, February, and March of this year. Um, in the email exchanges I've had with the mayor, you've told me that these folks are doing a lot more than, than just driving the trucks, and, and they're not doing it on the clock. This is timesheets. This is what we're paying for. Round numbers, these city employees are earning about $55,000 a year. They have great medical benefits. They have an IPERS retirement, and they have tremendous job security. It doesn't take too many of these people shorting us about 10 hours a week for us to be able to find some additional money for public safety. I say to the past, I realize that sanitation workers are funded by our fees, but that's still no reason to be throwing this money around it's our money. We ask that you care for it, like we do. The other thing is, I kind of wonder why I'm the one to bring this to the city council attention. I won't ask by show of hands, but I'm going to bet it's a bit of a surprise for some of you folks to know that the garbage men are we're struggling to get 32 hours a week, and most of the time we're paying about 30 hours a week. Second item. Let's not look for me or some of the people that, uh, that call in and get additional time to stumble upon these ideas. Let's start a city incentive program. Many, many companies have them, a couple of ones that I've been employed by. You bring us a money-saving idea that we can enact, and you get a percentage of the first year's savings. 
if there's any city employees that are listening to the uh, the broadcast, I claim no ownership of the sanitation driver idea. You might want to get that one in the box first. There's some real money involved with that idea. Finally, I'm very concerned by the exposure that's created by allowing employees to volunteer hours past their originally scheduled 40 hours a week. I want to know if we've done anything to mitigate the exposure from allowing the employee to donate past their first 40. Federal law indicates that we're going to cover overtime for every one of these hours. If an employee in question makes over $27 an hour and donates about 30 hours a week, which is the number I heard during the budget session, we're going to be out at some point about $63,000 a year. We've already been a year into this. At some point, we owe $63,000 above the stipend, the $350 a week stipend that we give this employee to, to do these extra duties does not release us from the hourly wage at code enforcement times 1.5 times every hour worked. When that bill comes due, I'm going to be out in the audience thinking how many police officers or firefighters could that money have paid for? It's about stewardship, but it's also about activity. I think all of you ran for your prospective office with some idea that you wanted to do good things and you wanted to watch our tax dollars. So it's time for some activity. I brought you three good ideas. I'm going to kind of try to gently hold your feet to the fire, and I'm going to ask where these ideas are going. I appreciate your time. If there's any questions about the data, I can answer that. But I'm going to encourage you guys have much better people that have more time that can throw this data together in a much more friendlier format for you guys. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Steve. Good evening, uh, Josh Wilson, 2831 Saratoga Drive. Uh, I want to thank the council for the opportunity to speak with you tonight, and I look forward to a civil exchange. Uh, due to the limited time I have to speak, I will be reading from a prepared statement. I would respectfully ask that questions or comments in regards to any of the statements I may make tonight will be held until the conclusion of my remarks, at which time I would ask that the council limit their responses to my statement to three minutes, unless you have called me previously today to request to speak to me for five. Many of you know me and have by now formed a personal opinion of my character. To some I am a friend and to others a thorn in the side. I'm very proud to have earned both of those titles. To maintain a healthy democracy, those in government need friends among the people and they also need those in the audience to hold them accountable and challenge them to do better. I'm proud to call myself a voice for the voiceless and have devoted my entire adult life to serving and working with the people of both my hometown and my state. In 2007, I was a candidate for public office at the age of 19. It was difficult, a difficult undertaking, but I was honored to finish second among four candidates and honored to receive nearly 800 votes in a low voter, voter turnout election. Perhaps the best thing I took away from my time as a candidate was the friendship I've developed with the man who beat me, Mike Young, our current school board president. I consider him a tremendous public servant, a friend, and a role model. Tonight, I wish to address a major concern that I have with the Waterloo City government a concern that has only grown larger as I have grown older. I know that many in the community share my concern. However, others do not wish to personally address it directly. I, however, have always remembered the wise words of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Our lives begin to end the moment we become silent about the things that matter. Waterloo is a great town and it is full of amazing individuals. Like any city, we have our problems, but I do not believe that any of these problems are too large to solve if we work together. I am extremely disheartened and fully believe that some of our elected officials are attempting to solve some of these problems on their own and instead of considering the counsel of their constituents, choose to work behind closed doors, ask minimal questions, and act prematurely. This statement can be proven by pointing out that tonight all of you approved a consent agenda and moved to pay over $2 million worth of taxpayer bills without much questioning of what the money was going to be spent on. One of the most heated debates that this body has had in recent months was whether or not to allow the public to speak for longer than three minutes. The Reverend Ed Logan said it best, that is ridiculous. This body would not exist if it were not for the very people that you so blatantly are attempting to silence. I have had the great opportunity to see open and transparent government in my career. During college, I had the opportunity to serve as an intern with US Senator Chuck Grassley, who despite being only a farmer from Iowa, 
is one of the most tremendous public servants in the country. It was from Senator Grassley that I learned that in order to be a true public servant, you must consistently interact with and listen to the concerns of people that you represent. To hold true to this philosophy, Senator Grassley holds a town hall meeting in every county in Iowa each year. The public is not held to any time limit and are allowed to address the senator on any question which he will ple he'll be pleased to answer in front of you. I asked the council tonight how often all of you attend public meetings with your constituents. Do you actively attend neighborhood meetings? Uh, if you do not, then how can you sit at the desk tonight and believe you're voting in the best interests of the people? For, new year, for nearly the past two years here, I have had the privilege of serving in the administration of Governor Terry Branstead. The media in town has stated that I served as a public liaison in the governor's office. Let me be clear, I served as the public liaison to the governor. It was my honor for two years to serve as the liaison bef between nearly two million people in the state of Iowa and our governor. I made the point of traveling to all uh, corners of the state along with my, empl my employer, the governor, and I have to believe that it's the benefits our state is experiencing today are a direct reflection of his open and transparent government. Today I went through the emails sent by uh, the council and the mayor, and I do not have those with me, and I won't be reading any of them, nor was I searching any purses or wallets on my way into the building. Instead, I wanted to offer a suggestion as a citizen of Waterloo. You will notice a tremendous difference in the way the city operates if you refrain from the negative and nasty name calling that is obviously present in communication obtained by myself. I would also like this time to repeat what I wrote in the Waterloo Courier last month. Mr. Mayor, I ask you to be a bigger person and admit that you have done wrong and apologize to the taxpayers of this city for being found in violation of campaign ethics and using your email for political purposes. If you cannot find it in your heart to apologize, I would ask that you ex at least explain to us why you believe you have done no wrong. Thank you, uh, Mr. With that, Wilson. Mr. K. Meyer will read the remainder of my statement. Bill K. Meyer, <clears throat> 526 Home Park Boulevard, Waterloo, Iowa. I have not read this, so uh, I'll have to go a little slower than he did. Today I went through hundreds of emails. I guess you read that one. Some of the FU is financially contributed, some of you I have financially contributed to and spent countless hours volunteering for and despite that I have never asked for anything in return. The only thing I have expected is from you to do what you say true and stay true to what you have promised the voters and be their voice. Wherever I continue to consider you friends, I can, cannot help but believe that you have strayed away from your promise and or failed to be strong public voices as you led many of us to believe. The city of Waterloo is a legal definition of the mayor council system of government. The mayor serves as an executive and the council serves as the legislative arm. I am alarmed at the comments made by members of the council that they do not want to step on the mayor's toes. These meetings every Monday are council meetings. You decide the rules. The outcome of your votes should be reflected by your beliefs and not the reflection of doing what you think the mayor wants. And conclude, to conclude, many of you will be happy to know that this will be my last meeting that I speak at. It becomes increasingly apparent that my comments nor those of others are truly absorbed or taken seriously. Simply sitting in the audience, one can tell that many council members do not pay attention or make eye contact with those who are speaking. Some are more concerned reading their electronic devices than about the citizens, the citizens has to say. Instead of taking five minutes of your time each week, which is clearly too much in too many eyes, I have decided to remain active behind the scenes in the community and weigh my opinion and becoming more involved in the next city government multiple uh, municipal election. And I only have one other thing to say, which is my comments, is we spent $300,000 on this room and it's hard to hear all of you and we keep complaining about that, but nothing ever happens. 
when you're sitting out in the audience, it's hard to hear what you people are saying. I wish a little of that 300000 you spend on the audio part of what's going on in here. What's that? They're coming this week. Yeah. Okay. Forest Dillard, 1725 Huntington Road. Tonight, on two different agenda items that were not passed for all three readings, you did change your mind or made some adjustments. Uh, one of them, you voted it down on the second reading. I think this shows why they originally asked for three readings. It's so that people can hear it, see it, and come down and make comments, study it, or whatever it takes. Like the group tonight, they did a lot of study, and they convinced you folks to, to give more time and, and work with the, the builder. This is why I hate to see things pass one, two, three all at once, because a lot of people at home are saying they had their mind made up before they ever got there. Forrest, you're wasting your time going down. You have shown that you didn't on these two issues. Thank you. Thanks, Forrest. Is there anyone else? Mayor, make a motion to receive and file oral comments and adjourn. To executive session. I mean, to, to executive, executive session. session. Second. The purpose of the executive session is a discussion of litigation which is permitted in a closed door meeting pursuant to Iowa Code Section 21.51C. You need a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Wilper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. We are adjourned uh, from regular session into executive session. Thank you, everyone.